Hello, and welcome to the recipient webinar for the Digitizing Hidden Special Collections and Archives program. I'm Kristen Blair, the Program Administrator at CLEAR, and I'll be moderating this webinar today. I'm joined by my geographically low colleagues who, along with me, make up the grants team. I'll allow them to introduce themselves now, telling you what they do and where they are today. Hi, I am Joy Banks. I am one of the program officers for um, CLEAR and I help to administrate the Hidden Collections and the Recordings at Risk projects. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Becca Kwan, and I am also a program officer uh, working on both of our grant programs. Hi, I'm Sharon Burney. I'm program assistant with CLEAR, and I work on both of the programs also and um, in Gainesville, Florida. We want to start by saying congratulations to all of you one more time. This is an extremely competitive, competitive grant program, and if you're here, it's because reviewers believe that your project and your work on it will make an important contribution to scholarship. We are excited to see these projects, pro projects progress over the coming months and years. The purpose of today's webinar is to walk you through the administrative process associated with holding a Hidden Collections grant. These grants can start anytime between January 1st and June 1st, so you're all in different stages of your projects. We've heard from many of you about the challenges in the last few months that have already affected your projects. We hope you'll continue sharing with us. We'll begin the presentation followed by time, we'll begin with the presentation followed by time for questions and discussion at the end. We'll also be recording this webinar and uploading it to our website along with the slides and transcripts so that you can revisit in the future and share it with colleagues. Before we get started, we'd like to help everyone get oriented with the Zoom webinar space. For a better group listening experience, all participants are muted. If the chat box is not currently displaying on your screen, you can hover towards the bottom of your Zoom screen to open it. The default is set to send messages to presenters, so be sure to change that setting using the drop-down menu to send a message to the entire group if you wish. We may also share green links here that will be that will also be captured as a part of our recording for your reference later. We'll be gathering questions in the Q&A box accessible in the same place as the chat box. Feel free to contribute the questions in the space at any time. All participants are also able to upvote questions, which helps us to see if multiple individuals have the same questions. At the end of the presentation, we'll go over the questions. Now I hand things over to Becca to get us started. Thanks, Kristen. So um, today we'll be covering the following topics. Um, in part one of our presentation, we'll do a few quick polls and cover an introduction to CLEAR. Uh, in part two, we'll transition to grant management and talk about the modifications and reporting requirements for this program. Uh, and we'll cover um, how you might make changes to your project and when and how to report on activities. Uh, then in part three, we'll move to questions. And as we mentioned, uh, feel free to type your questions into the Q&A box and we'll get to them all at the end. Uh, and we'll also open it up for some discussion um, about uh, how your projects are going so far, um, just so we can all hear from each other and see each other a little bit if you'd like to do that. Um, so we'll start with um, a few questions that we would love to know about your project so far. So I'm going to go ahead and launch this poll. Um, these are related to COVID. We've been hearing so much from folks who have grants in progress um, for both of our programs that there have been some real challenges so far. Um, so please take a moment, um, vote on these if they're relevant to you. Super helpful. So 
Yeah, if you don't have vendors, then feel free to skip those questions. Um, I'll go ahead and share some of the results um, to the question, do you currently have access to your collections? Um, 10 people said yes, staff are allowed access to the space, but in a limited capacity. Um, five say no, but they have a timeline for reentry. And four say no, and we don't know when we can return. So that's um, a lot better than the recordings at risk projects that we saw a couple months ago. Um, I'm glad to hear that so many of you have some access. Um, for folks using vendors, 10 people say you've been in touch with them, which is fantastic. Five people say no, and four people say that you don't know. Um, and then are your vendors operating? Eight people say yes, but in a limited capacity. One says yes, fully operational. One says no with the plan to reopen. And one says no, and they don't know when they'll reopen. So um, I'm going to go ahead and end it. That's really, really helpful. And um, yeah, we'd love to have you all share uh, at the end of the presentation, um, you know, how the pandemic has been um, affecting your projects so far. So um, think about that a little bit while we go through our presentation. So now on to um, a little bit about CLEAR. We always like to start with um, reminding everyone of our mission. Uh, CLEAR is an independent nonprofit organization that forges strategies to enhance research, teaching, and learning environments in collaboration with libraries, cultural institutions, and communities of higher learning. So what does that all mean? Um, CLEAR takes on a number of roles, including publishing research, convening meetings, and running programs. As an independent nonprofit, um, we're not part of the federal government, and we're also not a private foundation. Our activities are not funded by an endowment, but by a combination of grants and sponsorship, which give us the flexibility to operate our programs a little bit differently than federal funders. Uh, this program is generously supported by the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation and is one of, one of many programs cleared ministers. Um, like all of you, we write proposals for this program and then write reports on all of our activities. Our work is accomplished by a relatively small staff of 20 a geographically distributed individuals with the greatest concentration living in DC. Um, I am located in California and you can see uh, where everyone else on the grants team is located. Uh, so the four of us make up the grants team administering our two active regranting programs. And our team supports the entire grant cycle for these programs from application to final report. Part of our work is the occasional site visit to recipient institutions. So we hope to resume those once we can safely do so again. And we would love to come visit all of you and see um, the work you're doing. Um, the Hidden Collections program, uh, as we said, is a regranting program. Uh, so we apply periodically to the Mellon Foundation for funds to operate and award new grants. Um, so we definitely empathize with the entire process that all of you are going through. We encourage you to take a look at some of the resources we have available. Um, Clear's long been known for its free and open publication series, also known as Burgundy Books. We've published a wide range of topics, um, including but not limited to audio archiving, library and library service design, email archiving, 3D and VR visualization, data management, and more. One publication we'd like to highlight is displayed here. Uh, it's called Innovation, Collaboration, and Models. This was the capstone publication of our cataloging hidden collections program, um, which was the predecessor to our current digitization program. It's meant to share the models and lessons learned from cataloging and processing grant fund, grants that were funded between 20, excuse me, 2008 and 2014. 
The volume con consists of a series of papers from a symposium and unconference that were held in March 2015 and is available for free on our site. Uh, and even though it dates from a few years ago, the content may be useful for you as you think about description, scholarly engagement, and outreach for your program, uh, for your projects. We also recently published the full public report of the impact of all 128 projects that were funded through those grants uh, over the entire program's history. So um, a lot of good stuff uh, to learn from there. As some of you may have heard, we had plans to host a similar symposium and collect papers for the hidden, Digitizing Hidden Collections program this fall, uh, but we've had to delay it to 2022 uh, because of the pandemic. So in its place, we'll be hosting some smaller virtual celebrations to mark the first five years of the program, and we'll definitely keep you updated about that as plans progress. A couple more uh, quick resources to share. Um, the Digital Library Federation is a sibling program of, uh, of our grants, and its working groups are open to everyone. Uh, you would um, be able to join these groups that have uh, Slack channels, uh, email threads. Um, they meet regularly and tackle topics in digital libraries from assessment to records transparency, uh, to labor, to a support group for working with metadata. So lots of useful information and colleagues um, to connect with in those groups. Finally, we'll point out our Digitizing Special Formats Wiki. Uh, this is a project of DLF and contains a growing collection of resources about planning and executing digitization projects. If there are additional resources that you think would be helpful to include on this guide, uh, please email us at hiddencollections@clear.org, and we'll pass along your suggestions. Everyone's um, combined knowledge and efforts really make that a great resource, especially for those who are just starting out with digitization. So now we'll let you, um, now that you know a little bit about who we are and what we do as an organization, we'll move into a discussion about some of the key administrative information uh, that you'll need to know as the latest recipients of digitizing hidden special collections and archives grants. This next section will cover modifications and reporting requirements. So Joy will take those. Thanks, Becca. We'll start with grant modifications. Um, so while we hope uh, that project activities listed in the approved proposals will be executed as described, we do certainly understand that unanticipated issues can arise, which may require that you deviate from the original plan um, that you submitted. And now more than ever in this time, we realize that many of you still have um, limited access to your collections and that's causing delays right here at the start. Uh, for some changes, we won't require approval from CLEAR, so these would be things um, like changes in project staff other than the principal investigators or PIs, or perhaps a small shift in budget expense expenses within the same budget line. These can sort of just be addressed in the project's interim narrative and financial reports. However, changes that affect the underlying terms of the grant must receive approval by CLEAR, before you actually implement the change. So examples of this would be um, extensions of the project end date, changes to the PI, and then any changes to collections that you've uh, nominated for digitization. These modification requests are common for this program. They are not unexpected. You should not hesitate to ask us for what you need to do to successfully complete your project. Um, we've manage to work through every issue that's come up. So don't, don't be afraid to ask. Program staff can always be reached by email at hiddencollections at clear.org. That's the way to reach the whole team. Um, to move forward with the modification, we do have an online form through which recipients can notify us of a modification request. 
And the purpose of the forum was really to streamline this process and hopefully reduce the amount of time spent making and approving these requests. Access to grant modifications and extension request form is available through the link at the top of the recipient resources webpage. So just like you had access to an applicant recipients resources page um, or an applicant resources page, we have a recipient resources page for you now. The same form is used across CLEARS grant programs and is designed to allow for the request of multiple types of modification requests within the same form. The form includes sections on descriptive information, uh, questions about extension requests, other modification requests, and then you have a space at the end to provide a brief explanation and justification of the modification. In order for you to prepare the necessary information for the request, we do also provide a grant modification form template, which is linked to um, on this slide. And then we also have a screenshot of what that looks like. So it's a Google Doc template, and this would allow you to see all of the questions that we ask um, in advance. There is a little bit of question logic involved in the form, so you might not have to answer all of the questions once you get in. Um, a link is provided at the top of this document that allows you to create a personal copy of the template that you can share with anyone you're collaborating with. But all modification requests should be submitted through the online form, so you'll need to just copy and paste your prepared responses into the space. Um, when you are doing reporting, oh, this slide is out of order. So we, here, Kristen, go to the next slide. There we go. Uh, so this is a glimpse of what the grant modification and extension request form looks like. Uh, it's a, basically just a survey monkey form at this point. Um, once you have submitted and we've received this, you should hear from us about two weeks. Uh, for that reason, if you do find that you need a modification, it's important to request it at least a few weeks, ideally a month, maybe even longer, uh, before the final end date of your grant. Some modifications, such as changes in your principal investigator, should be requested immediately rather than waiting until the end of your project. Um, we get into problems if you've been working with a new PI and they're not getting notifications for things like reports. <laughs> uh, Project end dates were included in the award letter that was emailed to PIs around the time that funds were distributed. But if you ever need a reminder of any of these dates, just let us know and we'll, we can get that for you. In many cases, completing the form will be all that you need to do to seek approval for a modification. However, under certain circumstances, additional documentation may be required to move forward with the request. The guidelines for modification requests vary slightly between CLEAR's different grant programs, so do be sure to check the recipient resources page uh, for the most up-to-date information. If you have any questions about the process, CLEAR staff is always available via email um, to our program account at hiddencollections at clear.org. So now Becca's going to go over um, the modifications, the different types of modification requests. Yes. So no cost extension requests are exactly what they sound like. A request to push back the project end date and final report without requesting additional funding. These may be requested in case of unforeseen project delays, which may include prolonged personnel search due to staff turnover, delays when working with a vendor, or delays caused by institutional infrastructure issues. No cost extensions should be requested between one and three months prior to a project's end date. The reason we ask you to wait until those final months is that only one no cost extension can be granted per project. And we found that requests made closer to the end date provide more accurate estimates of the amount of extra time that's actually needed. 
we encourage you to take time now to set a calendar reminder for your team for three months before the ending of your project so that you'll know when it's time to request an extension if you need one. You may also want to set a similar reminder for your reporting deadlines. It's important to note that extensions cannot be granted for projects whose end dates have already passed. We really can't emphasize enough the importance of paying close attention to that date. It's also worth noting that the project end date comes typically three months before your final report deadline, since some people have been confused about that in the past. We wanna make that um, especially clear. We recommend standard project extension lengths of either six months or 12 months. On the request form, you're able to enter a custom date, but we reserve the right to make an alternative recommendation if um, we think one of our standard uh, limits makes more sense. So you'll use the grant modification form on the recipient's resources page to request your extensions. The form is often sufficient for staff to evaluate the request, um, but like with other changes, we may request additional information or documentation. If one of the principal investigators or PIs changes during the period of the grant, um, you must inform CLEAR immediately by completing the grant modification form. All of CLEAR's grant management tasks require current contact details for every grant's PI, so it's important that we know when a principal investigator departs uh, and that their responsibilities have been transferred to someone else. So in order to complete that particular modification, you'll also be required to supply a letter on institutional letterhead from the head of the institution or department. The letter doesn't need to be very long, but it should include the name and title of the new PI, as well as the date the change will become effective. A CV for the new PI will also be requested for our files. On occasion, grantees find it necessary to spend grant funds in a manner other than originally proposed in your application. Reallocations of grant funds are allowable, but these changes must be approved by us prior to reallocated funds being spent. To initiate this process, you'll complete that same grant modification form. Any proposed use of reallocated funds should be aligned with the original goals and scope of the project and within current guidelines for allowable and disallowable costs, uh, which you probably saw when you applied. As a rule of thumb, for smaller hidden collections projects defined as under $200,000, CLEAR generally doesn't require notification for reallocations that amount to less than 5% of a project's total budget. So larger projects, those over $200,000, uh, and all projects, really, if you have any doubt, um, should contact CLEAR about any reallocations that are over $10,000. So um, feel free to ask us, check in if you need more information, um, or just complete the grant form and we'll be in touch with you. So when you complete the form, you'll be asked to provide the amount of funds that are remaining in the grant. Uh, how much, if any, of the original funds will be remaining at the close of the project, and a brief description of how the funds will be spent. CLEAR program staff may ask for more information, such as a revised project budget, to complete the review of, of your request. So all that information can be found on the recipient resources page. We just want you to hear it. Um, once at the beginning so that you have some idea when you go there and uh, actually need to do all this. Uh, should we update any of our grant modification procedures, we'll post the most up-to-date information there for your reference. Be sure to share that page with all staff that may be involved in the management of the project over time. Clear staff are available to answer any of your questions related to these modifications, so please don't hesitate to reach out to our program email account. Um, as Joy said, changes and unforeseen circumstances are not uncommon with this program. So we always seek to find ways to make your project successful. Um, we can also set up a phone conversation 
um, with Joy or myself or both of us um, to talk out any particularly complicated situations that you find yourself in. Um, so just email us uh, to schedule one of those calls. So at this point, we'll talk about reporting requirements um, that will come partway through and at the end of your project. Joy? Thanks, Becca. Um, so this is that slide that popped up um, earlier in the presentation. And Kristen, you don't have to worry about going and finding it. I'll, I'll grab the, the notes uh, to keep it easier. But reporting, and it always seems strange to talk about reporting here right at the beginning, um, but you are required to submit reports according to the schedule that was outlined in each of your award letters. So your first report is due a year and one month after the start date of your project. So um, you all have start dates between January 1 and June 1 of this year. So your report will be due a year plus a month from then. Your final report is then due three months after your project end date. So we give you a little bit more time to complete that. If your project is only 12 months, you will just submit a final report three months after the end date of your project. Your annual reports to CLEAR are a deeply important part of the agreement between our grantees, CLEAR, and our own funder, the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation. The Digitizing Hidden Collections staff compiles our own report on the Hidden Collections program each year, which we submit to Mellon um, around June 30th, although Speaking of being grant recipients, we also got an extension due to our own complications this year. Uh, the, the report that we send includes all of the reports that you send to us. Um, so Mellon does see the importance of your work um, that all of you are doing. We will accept reports for this program um, solely through an online form which is linked to from our recipient resources page. And that's the space that flashed up on the screen while we were talking about modifications. Um, so I'm just gonna talk a little bit about that and then come back to where we are, Kristen. Um, you're gonna use the same system that you use to uh, apply for your grant project. So it's the um, SM Apply. And um, it's linked to as well on the recipient resources page. All communication and reminders for reporting will be sent to the primary principal investigator or PI. So if there are any others involved in project work who do need these notifications, um, please do send us their names and contact information so that we can add them to our list. It's a good idea to log in to SM Apply at the soonest convenience that you have um, using that the same email address and password you use to create your application. So this wouldn't necessarily be the PI's uh, email address and login, and that's sort of an important distinction. If you use the same credentials that you use to submit your proposal, you'll see the reporting form for your project when you log in. If at any point you forget these credentials or lose access to them, for, if, for example, if that person who had them leaves your institution, just be in touch with us and we'll help work through um, getting you access to your reporting system. You can also add um, collaborators to the reporting space, just like you did for your um, application. And then uh, collaborators, if they're not actually in the system, will be invited to SM Apply. They will be able to help you um, fill in the reporting form, but at the end of the day, the person who's the primary owner of the account is the one that has to click submit. So if you ever need to change the primary owner, let us know that too. Okay, so now going back, um, a few more words about reporting. Um, these aren't just a way uh, to just to help us keep up with your progress, but it also is useful um, if you need support as your progress, as your projects evolve. So we can um, look for any challenges that you're facing and maybe help mitigate those as you encounter them or connect you with other projects that are facing similar challenges. This can also, um, 
we might also notice that you may be in need for a no cost extension that you might not necessarily be aware of that warning um, and can remind you of the process and letting you know those timelines for that. If you do find that your report is likely to be late due to circumstances beyond your control, which we completely understand, um, do let us know as soon as possible. We're happy and glad to work with you to give you the extension that you need. Um, but this is really important to do before your report is overdue since these do affect our own reporting to the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation. Um, as with most of the resources that we have, we've created a template for the form that you can work collaborati collaboratively with. Um, this is available on the recipient resources page and it includes all the questions that you're expected to answer. Do be sure that you select the correct one. We have a couple of different report forms at this point. Um, so just look for the one that is relevant to you. You, um, okay, so now we're just gonna cover some of the concepts in the report to set you up for success. The form is organized into um, four or five sections, depending on if it's an interim or final report. So, um, the first, when writing your report, the first place to start is the final, is looking at your, the proposal that you submitted. So you're aware of the project that you gave to us and what you're gonna be reporting on. All sections of the report should demonstrate the project's consistency with these original ideas. Of course, some variations are um, understandable and expected as you adapt the project um, and encounter real life. Small differences between the planned approach and actual project work can be explained in the narrative of the report. However, as mentioned earlier, um, grantees will need to request grant modifications if there are more substantive changes to your project, um, especially regarding your budget, your timeline, and then your deliverables. Overall, in your report, it's important to demonstrate to CLEAR and the Mellon Foundation that the scope and goals of the project continue to reflect the proposals selected for funding by CLEAR's independent review panel. We're now just gonna do a quick walkthrough of the information you're asked to include. The first section of our report covers general information, so your reference number, which is in your award letter, the project title, your institution, PI, and then contact information for the person submitting the report. In section two, uh, this is the, the narrative assessment of your project. The first thing we'll ask about are new internal and public developments. So these are a series of checkboxes that you can just tick off. Um, there's a whole bunch of them. Uh, digit, if you're doing digitization metrics, um, implementation of new workflows, new tools, new donations or grant applications. And then we also wanna hear about the public developments such as um, creation of new blogs, websites, research guides, exhibits. Uh, maybe you have had some of your digitized material incorporated into um, curricular uh, courseware, there we go. Um, maybe there's a publication that came out of these. You have a chance to summarize the project goals and objectives during the reporting period, and then also explain any changes or additions to your original plans. You can elaborate on the developments um, you checked off above or any other significant accomplishments and outcomes of the project, both for your institution your professional community, and for the collection's users. You can discuss challenges or setbacks you have experienced, whether expected or unexpected, and your strategies for addressing them. We also want to know about the individuals that have made contributions to the project and briefly describe the role that each has played. And finally, um, tell us about your outreach initiatives, future plans, and then um, there's an opportunity to upload additional documentation if you like. The next section of the form asks you information about three things. Uh, so there's the quantity and types of materials you propose to digitize, the master digital files created through the digitization, um, the materials digitized, and digital files created during the entire grant, 
And then other quantities of deliverables you want to note for us, such as metadata records created, any linked data, URIs produced, authority records, things like that. To complete this part of the report, it will be very helpful to refer to your original proposal. So it's a good idea to check now to be sure you have a copy of that somewhere safe for your whole team to access. Compiling these numbers will be much easier if you plan now to track them as your project proceeds. So setting up perhaps a shared document or spreadsheet um, that will be something you'll think, thank yourself for later. We do have an Excel template um, that you can use if you don't have one and that's linked to on the recipient resources page. Next up is the financial assessment, and this comes in two different parts. So the first part is a financial narrative, and on that you can comment on the actual grant expenditures um, during the reporting period as they relate to your proposed budget. Every budget category should be addressed here, and if there's any variances of 5% or more between projected and actual spending, do make sure to include a detailed explanation you should also discuss here any approved budget modifications since your last report. And we do send, when we give a budget modification, we remind you that you need to talk about that in your next report. The second part is the financial report, um, which is an upload using the same budget and financial report detail that you submitted with your proposal. The one difference here is that instead of just budgeted, you'll now be submitting the actual um, fields and um, yes, yeah, so you'll have both fields filled in to show how you've spent your funds. This is just a reminder of what that budget template looks like. Um, it's easiest if you just have the Excel file that you submitted with your proposal. If you have lost track of that, do let us know and we can supply it to you. When it comes time to submit your final report, as opposed to just an interim report, you will include a final project assessment, which has four required components. So the first is a final project narrative, which just allows you time to reflect on an overall assessment of your project, including the most significant outcomes and challenges, as well as the most valuable lessons learned. The second is the final financial narrative and report, which is pretty much very similar to the interim report. And then the last two components will, um, we ask you to point us towards your digitized collections and metadata. Uh, the first of these will request the names and URLs of the catalogs, repositories, or services through which the digitized files and associated metadata have been made available. And then the second component will be a project manifest which asks for the URLs and file names for access copies of just a representative sampling of the digital files created through your project. Here's just a few more details of the project manifest. Um, and to be honest, we're, this was only just required starting with the 2018 cohort. So you're our second cohort with this. So um, they've helped us with some of the details of this and we'll continue to update instructions as we need to. Um, but it's basically just a spreadsheet which includes the names, locations of the digital files, um, usually the access copies, as well as notations about any checksums and restrictions. This, uh, we're using a tool which is sort of like a web crawler that allows us to conduct periodic checks that the online files created through CLEAR's digitization regranting programs remain, in fact, online. Uh, note that this template does have multiple tabs, so there are instructions embedded in this file. Taking a look at this template now and building um, completion of this document into your workflow will help you save time later. Uh, for those of you who work with vendors, often your digitization vendor will return a spreadsheet uh, to you that will be very similar to what you need to submit here. And you should be able to adapt the vendor's spreadsheet for this template. If you work out your file naming conventions at the start of your project and ensure your vendor names uh, your file exactly according to your needs, most of your work for this requirement will already be done. 
If you leave it until the end, um, it might take some scrambling to put it together. So we do strongly recommend coming up with a strategy for compiling this data during the course of your project work. Um, and because of the uh, size of Hidden Collections projects, we are now accepting just a sampling. And we're happy to talk with you about uh, what the best sampling might be if you don't have an idea already. Of all of the pieces of the final report, this document is really what allows us to verify that you've created the deliverables agreed upon when you accepted the grant. This evidence will be critical to our own reporting to the, the Mellon Foundation, so we really do appreciate your help in making this possible for us. The final section of our presentation is just some information about modes of communication before we turn over questions and discussion. Uh, so Becca, you wanna take this on? Yes. So um, feel free to drop any questions into that Q&A box that we mentioned earlier. And we'll let Joy take a, a, a breather after all of that information um, while we talk a little bit about communications. So um, we have an organization-wide acknowledgement guidelines page created by CLEAR's Director of Communications, Kathleen Smith. Uh, that you may find useful. The, the um, guidelines contain boilerplate language, information about the use of CLEAR's logo, and other information like that. Um, the link on the slide will take you there, um, and the resources, the resource is also listed on the recipient resources page, and you may have seen it um, in other places as well. Um, these these guidelines provide assistance for a variety of situations where you may want to talk about CLEAR, like news releases, social media posts, press events, and so on. Uh, while it's not required that you run anything past us, uh, Kathleen is happy to review any formal press releases uh, for accuracy prior to their publication, and her contact information is listed there on the slide. Um, as we've mentioned, CLEAR's website has a lot of useful information for you as you move into your role as grant recipient. Um, just as you've used that applicant resources page, your recipient resources page um, will be a hub for you as you work through your project. There you'll find information on grant modifications and reporting that we discussed earlier. Additionally, the contact information for us, all the temp templates you may need, and information um, about our uh, about uh, citing us are all contained on that page. On the funded projects page, you'll find descriptions of each of the projects that have been funded by the Hidden Collections program to date. If you haven't already done so, please go ahead and proofread the summary of your project that's currently posted there and send us any updates or changes. Uh, those were taken straight from your application, so um, there, may be, um, there may have been some time since you last looked at them, and we're happy to make those updates. We, um, we love to hear about your progress as you continue uh, with your projects. So if you would like to share any updates on Twitter or Instagram, please feel free to tag us or use hashtag DigHC so we can repost. Um, if there's anything that you'd like us to share directly with our followers, um, you can feel free to email us and we'll go ahead and share. Um, you know, any and all project updates are welcome. Uh, we love to be able to talk about all the amazing work you're doing. Um, and, you know, even if you have interns working on stuff, um, we, we're happy to, um, to amplify. So uh, we, one final um, resource is the grants and programs newsletters that go out quarterly. Um, so we, we can include information about your projects in those and um, feel free to subscribe to those. We, we contact you only a few times a year. So it's a great way to stay connected. So um, that is pretty much all the information that we have to share. We know we, we've covered a lot of material, so now we'll shift to answering any questions that you have. 
Um, and also we, we have a question for you is to, um, to share a little bit more about how COVID has affected your project. So we're gonna promote everybody to presenters, which should take us just a moment. And our team will get started on that. Feel free to ask your questions um, using your speakers and mic. Um, you can turn on your video if you'd like, or you can just use the chat box. It's totally what you're most comfortable with. So while Becca works on promoting everybody, we did have a question come in to the Q&A box and I can go ahead and take that. Um, is it helpful to report in-kind services or products we receive from another grant project that supports this project? We're participating in another Mellon funded project. Well, first of all, congratulations on that funding that you have. Um, for us, uh, you are more than welcome to report on other funding that you get um, if it's helping to supplement the work that you're doing. Um, we would ask that you keep that in the narrative portions of your reporting to us. Um, it should not be entered into the uh, detail, so that spreadsheet that you have um, for in-kind funding. Uh, but yeah, no, we're, we're very excited to hear about other funding, um, either that you currently are receiving or that you might get as a result of project work that you're doing. Um, occasionally, this is another question that comes up uh, from time to time with our recipients. Um, who may be seeking additional funding for projects. Uh, the sort of rule of thumb on seeking funding for uh, tangential work is to make sure that the outcomes that you are uh, submitting for the grant funding are distinct enough that uh, you can report separately to the two different funders. So um, whether you decide to split a collection or um, whether, you know, we'll cover digitization, then they're gonna cover like metadata enhancement. Um, just thinking a little bit about how you're gonna report the outcome so that it remains clean projects and you're not sort of double dipping for funding, if that makes sense. We're also more than happy to answer any specific questions that you have about funding. So I think at this point, everybody is promoted. Yes, and I'll go ahead and stop the recording. And I heard somebody perhaps. Hi, this is Katrina.